Um, so, welcome to the second half of day one at IFDAM. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful time, your bellies are filled and you are sufficiently caffeinated. If you're not, I'm pretty sure you know where the nearest coffee machine is. Um, so, first up, we have a talk about why privacy matters, and I shall leave the stage. Enjoy. Hello. Uh, my name is Amin Soleimani. Uh, I'm here to present uh, a talk I've rebranded to now, Why Privacy Matters. Uh, I originally gave this talk at ETH Denver about two and a half months ago in early March. Um, it's going to go over some of the, uh, well, let me hit the next slide, uh, agenda. First, we're going to talk about why privacy matters. Then we're going to talk about the history of Tornado Cash. And then we're going to talk about privacy pools version zero. Uh, and next steps, and then I'm going to cover some of the updates uh, since ETH Denver that we have. So why privacy? First and foremost, it's because privacy is normal, you fucking freaks. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's deeply sociopathic to try and get everybody else to reveal all of their secrets for your benefit. Uh, also, because full surveillance central bank digital currencies are coming, they're going to have like expiration times for your money, certain things you can or cannot buy, and it's very important that we preserve alternatives and uh, maintain our own privacy, and because governments abuse their power like all the time. Uh, my favorite example of this actually comes from a talk that Zuko gave on Bankless, where he described how uh, the countries that had really good KYC databases of who everybody was, including their ethnicity and religious background, uh, like, you know, who was all Jewish, uh, were, you know, the Nazis were very excited to discover this because it let them hunt down all the Jews. Now, when I gave this talk at Denver, I actually got it wrong. I said it was Poland uh, that he cited as an example, and I went back and looked at it today, and it's the Netherlands. <clears throat> So, uh, also because the future that we are preparing for is every human against every abusive government on the planet. That's why we build code that's open and public goods. Uh, I'm going to give a little backstory about Tornado Cash. Um, some of this might be uh, overlap from the discussion we had earlier, but you know I'm going to repeat it. Uh, Ethereum nerds wanted a mixer for personal privacy, right? This is all public blockchains. When you send transactions, your whole history is uh, there for anybody to see. And the way we were doing privacy before is like run our money through Coinbase, which as we discussed is not a very sophisticated privacy preserving strategy because any low level support engineer at Coinbase can be bribed to reveal your transactions to anybody who wants. So to make this happen, Malik Dow gave the first grants to Tornado Cash. Uh, it was the second ZK Snark deployment in human history, there was a thousand person trusted setup ceremony. And after being a finalist, there were two teams that were considered finalists for the first mixer grant that Moloch gave. And we picked the other one, not the Tornado Cash team. And they were so upset, they were so pissed off that they actually built the entire DAP in three weeks uh, after being rejected by this. And so then we went back, we gave them a retroactive grant for the work that they'd already done. Uh, and paid for all of their future dev audits and the trusted setup and the audits for the trusted setup and et cetera. The final contribution that Malik Dow made was to make sure that the admin key was set to zero so that down the line uh, we wouldn't be you know, liable uh, for things that uh, you know, could go wrong. I'm very glad we made that decision. Uh, had we not, the future might, uh, things might have looked a little bit different. Um, Everything seemed to be going fine until uh, some things happened. Uh, North Korea allegedly you know, stole a bunch of money from a video game. Uh, why a video game had $600 million is a different story. Uh, but they stole it all, and then they put it in some wallets, and they started uh, depositing some of it into uh, Tornado. So on March 29th, they, they hacked Axie Infinity. 
They started uh, running some money through Blender. Uh, this, uh, OFAC sanctioned that on May 8th. And then on August 8th, OFAC sanctioned the Tornado Cash contracts, which North Korea allegedly used to mix uh, $100 million. And that same week, the Netherlands arrested Alexei Pertsev. And uh, all of the people in this picture are awesome for showing up to represent Alex uh, in, uh, I think that was here. And so, uh, you know, <clears throat> incredible show of support by the community. I don't think very many of us expected this, and we were all uh, surprised and, and really grateful for the out outcry of community support. One of the interesting things on there, you know, if you read some of these, they say open source is not a crime, privacy is not a crime. They, one of them says, will, will you arrest a gun maker for facilitating a public shooting? Now, that's not necessarily the best thing that we want to use as an example, but it does make the point that, you know, when gun manufacturers create and sell weapons, they're doing it presumably because people want to use them for home defense, right? And so it is not necessarily the liability of the manufacturers of these defense tools when rogue actors use them for malicious purposes. And similarly, we should free Alexei. So he was in, this is a little outdated, he was in jail for six months for writing code, he's accused of money laundering and was you know, denied bail. Now he's under house arrest walking around here with an anklet. Uh, still should have been, I think, not you know, under house arrest the whole time because anklet technology's been there. They just did that to mess with him. Um, and if you can, you know, please consider donating to his legal defense fund. It is at freealex.tokensoft.com. Uh, Malik Dow has donated 200 ETH. Gnosis has donated some, and One Inch has donated some as well. Thank you all for contributing. Uh, in, in the aftermath of uh, Tornado Cash, uh, U.S. citizens can no longer use Tornado Cash. Uh, U.S. citizens with funds in Tornado Cash have to petition OFAC for a license to withdraw their funds. And so now, only criminals, non-US citizens, and authorized US government employees, there is a line in there that uh, made an exemption for authorized US government employees, I wonder who the, they are, uh, are allowed to use Tornado Cash, you're very welcome. Um, and, and further, promoting the use of Tornado Cash can be considered conspiracy to violate international sanctions. Uh, the way they got Virgil was not actually on violating international sanctions, it was conspiracy. He just tried hard enough to violate it that it was fine. So this is a chart of the Tornado Cash deposits and withdrawals uh, as, of, as of March. I, I didn't make it. It's actually higher now than it was then. Uh, this just... Uh, goes to show you can't actually ban Tornado Cash, you can just ban, you know, America from using it or your citizens from interacting with it. Uh, it's, you, you can see the, the part in which they banned it, there were some withdrawals after that, uh, but then it sort of slowed down. But even though these numbers are, are smaller now, it's on track to anonymize something like $250 million. One of the most interesting things that happened as a result of Tornado Cash was the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank published a report on it, which was the best report uh, I've ever seen written about it. And they explore the trade-off between regulation and privacy. They're making recommendations to the government about how to regulate Tornado Cash. And so they say that they believe users should have, uh, they, they should be able to use this, uh, and they, they called it, uh, an integral part of public blockchain infrastructure, uh, but they want users to have to use the compliance tool that uh, Tornado Cash created themselves in order to send receipts to a financial intermediary. So when you go to Coinbase, you have to say, hey, look, I, I brought some money from Tornado Cash, but here's my receipt, it says who I am. And that gives you privacy from everybody else on the blockchain, but not the regulators. The regulators still have your full transaction history, and it still suffers from the same problem that once Coinbase knows how to correlate your deposits and withdrawals, well, once again, low-level support engineers at Coinbase can be bribed to reveal your whole transaction history. So we want to do better than this. Uh, we want to fix the critical flaw that we believe Tornado Cash had. Uh, users weren't able to prove 
that they weren't associated with North Korea or any other terrorist group or illicit uh, source of funds. And so Vitalik had an idea and he said, what if users could prove that they weren't some subset of the deposits? And so this brings us to what, you know, one way I like to call it is self-sovereign anonymity. Users can choose to exclude some subset of depositors when they withdraw, and they can do this without revealing who they are. So I'm gonna switch to the uh, Vitalik's first description like of this idea. One simple thing that you can do, right, is uh, you can create a, like say, Tornado Cash like mixer, uh, where when you withdraw, in, uh, in addition to just making a zero knowledge proof that proves that like you, ha you have a valid deposit and that your valid deposit wasn't spent yet, you could also make a zero knowledge proof that says this withdrawal is, is not part of like one of this set of deposits or this withdrawal is part of one of this subset of deposits. So you would not reveal exactly who, who you are. You would not even reveal exactly who you are to like one specific group. So like it's, this is not like one of those uh, backdoor key type of proposals. Right, but what you would be doing is you would be saying like, I am some participant in this ecosystem, it's, but I, like, I am not a hacker. Like one simple thing. All right, thanks Vitalik. <clears throat> and back. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to now show a demo of this and we'll see it in action. I'll see if the sound comes through on this one. Uh, I'm gonna actually, I'll just narrate it myself. Uh, so this is our demo of privacy pools. It was live on Optimism uh, Gourley testnet. Uh, so this allows you to make a deposit. So right now it's showing that you can deposit you know, 0.001 ETH or 0.01 ETH. So we pick one and then we click the deposit. There's some you know, off-chain MetaMask confirmation that's happening. Uh, and <clears throat> once it succeeds, I've made this deposit, and so then I can go to the withdrawal tab, and I can prepare my withdrawal. And so I can uh, click this, the subset maker. And so this is a very rudimentary demo, right? This is just meant to explain the concept. Uh, and so once you click the subset maker, it shows you all of the deposits that have been made. And you can just point and click and be like, yep, I'm not this guy, I'm not that guy, I don't like them, you know, and you can exclude them from your withdrawal. And so that way, uh, when you do withdraw, everybody can see that you are not these people. And so you uh, create a Merkle tr uh, tree out of those subsets, you get the Merkle root, and then you submit that with your withdrawal, you generate a ZK proof that encodes it, and you submit it with your withdrawal, and it actually broadcasts uh, that, mm, the root uh, on chain. And later on, uh, people are able to go, so I've you know, successfully withdrawn now, uh, you can go to the Explorer. And when you go to the Explorer, you can see all of the different withdrawals. And you can look at a specific withdrawal, and then you can look at the specific excluded and included deposits. And if you look at the excluded deposits, there you see exactly the deposits of the person excluded. And so you can be like, hey, I'm not the bad guys, right? I think I had even worse hair that day than today, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we, we built this, we built the demo for it, and uh, yeah, it, it's on Optimism. Check it out, it's on privacypools.com. So I believe that this is actually better than Tornado Cash uh, because it gives you more sovereignty as an individual. Uh, when, when, when you use Tornado Cash, it's, you don't really have the choice of whether or not you get to associate with all of the other deposits. Maybe I don't want to associate with you know, the terrorists, like, uh, before I didn't really have the choice. Um, and, and maybe there's other groups that I also don't want to associate with, like illicit hackers, you know, in DeFi and, and so forth. Um, and so this doesn't force you to share an anonymity set with anyone you don't want to. It's your choice. Uh, some might think that this is narcware, uh, that we're, you know, building for the, the the cops or something, and I, I don't believe so, and the reason why is because, as I said, uh, this gives you more sovereignty, more choice, which I think is, is ultimately better. Uh, so the reason we're doing this, it's you know, meme-driven development. Um, I, we shipped this demo to start a conversation so we could 
talk to the regulators, talk to the relevant stakeholders, and advance this idea. Uh, a couple months ago, when Tornado Cash was properly sanctioned, I was somewhat demoralized. I didn't realize that something like this was even possible, that you could do this. And I, you know, I, I, I saw the, the, the s s uh, systems that you're like, in introduce a back door and, uh, and like reveal your whole transaction history, and I didn't like those very much. Uh, but then when Vitalik came up with this idea and people you know, were ready to implement it and we built this demo, like then I knew that uh, we had to do this right now and, in order to ha start this conversation before the regulators take action to decide the final rules based on like Tornado Cash you know, as it existed, uh, we can help them understand that there's a more attractive equilibrium. And so it's going to take a lot of people to make this work. Uh, people, uh, entities like Chainalysis, TRMs, uh, need to be able to do tracebacks on deposits so that users don't have to manually, you know, point and click uh, the deposits that they want to exclude. That's not a very scalable system. It doesn't actually work. It's great for demonstration purposes. Um, and then we need UI uh, providers to reference those lists. So our squad goals. Uh, and so this was before I was saying, you know, we're looking LFG looking to support some more teams and helping make this happen, interested in collaborating, uh, please join our Privacy 2.0 discussion group. And now we'll get into uh, the updates. Actually, shout out to Privacy uh, uh, Chainway. Uh, they made a proof of innocence thing. It's roughly the same thing as Privacy Pools, except it applies to the existing Tornado Cash instead of being a separate contract. Be sure to check out their work too. Uh, so updates. So this is new slides I just added in the lunchroom. Uh, so we have a Telegram channel of about 100 people uh, across the industry. It's you know representatives from Chainalysis, TRM, ZK Devs, Coinbase people. You know a, a pretty wide swath. Uh, if you're interested in contributing, uh, please let me know, and I'll add you to the group. Uh, one of the important updates we have is you know uh, the guy who wrote the St. Louis Federal Reserve paper. Uh, we had a conversation with him, and he likes privacy pools. Europeans, surprisingly, uh, seem to understand the benefits of privacy a little bit better than Americans who simply want to spy on everybody. Uh, and tentatively working with um, him and Vitalik and a representative from Chainalysis to do a new paper which will explain the benefits of privacy pools and make a new regulatory recommendation. Uh, I've also engaged a former associate director at OFAC as my lawyer so that we can go into OFAC and present privacy pools to them and uh, you know, show them how it can help the regulators accomplish their goals, which is uh, isolating the illicit funds so that their anonymity sets are smaller. Also, please don't sanction this new thing. This is the kind of thing that I'm hoping to educate people about. Uh, this is a really funny example where after we launched this demo, uh, somebody went and withdrew. So there's a tornado cache on Ethereum Gorley. It is also sanctioned. <laughs> uh, but somebody took Ether out of the sanctioned tornado cache on Gorley, bridged it up into the optimism Gorley, and then deposited it into our privacy pools. <laughs> and so I tweeted this which is, hello, OFAC violation detected, deposits number 63 and 80 came from the OFAC sanctioned Gorley ETH tornado cash contracts. Uh, please exclude them when you withdraw. And that's the kind of thing that you can do now and the kind of thing we're trying to automate. So how do you automate this? Uh, we're planning on building an MVP of this. We're already in the process. And uh, we're going to have a single you know, canonical exclusion list to start with. Uh, it'll be managed by something where ten, you know, placeholder name is ListDAO, uh, and the purpose of ListDAO is that it is employed by users to curate the best possible anonymity set. It aggregates labels from multiple different blockchain analysis companies. The objective is to maximally detect illicit activities with the minimum number of false positives, and also make it easily forkable in case other people down the line want to create their own ListDAOs. So in order to do this, you need databases of all labeled transactions. We have a uh, time delay enforcement. So uh, 
you might wonder, oh, well, what if I deposit and withdraw right away? Are you tracking all of the addresses on the blockchain? And the answer is no. Uh, for chain analysis and people like TRM to work their magic and run detection, they need to do a traceback. So it's once funds are deposited into the privacy pool, then the traceback starts in order to determine whether or not uh, those, the sources of that funds are illicit or if it's okay. And so automatically, everybody will exclude, uh, we'll pick a number, let's call it a week, uh, and they'll exclude all of the deposits from the last week when they withdraw. Let's say, I'm none of the deposits in the last week, and that gives time for the vendors to go and do the tracebacks and make sure that they're not from illicit funds. Uh, and so then, you know, it would label the transactions and generate these proofs. It would periodically update a Merkle tree, uh, Merkle root on chain, uh, and make the Merkle tree available so that uh, individuals and entities can verify that the uh, deposits were properly excluded. Uh, and then it would also, yeah, provide this data to anybody else who's asking for it via API. The reason we have to do all this is because the code isn't actually the hard part uh, for something like this. Uh, not getting sanctioned is the hard part. Uh, and in order for that to work, you need deep integrations with data analytics firms like Chainalysis to build APIs that regulated financial institutions like Coinbase can consume. Because if you take money out of a privacy pool and send it to Coinbase, they need to then turn to Chainalysis or somebody and say, hey, did the user depositing this funds from this privacy pool, did they properly exclude all of the known terrorists, uh, you know, et cetera, addresses at the time that they withdrew the money? Did they follow the rules? And if they did, great. And if they, uh, if they didn't, then you, know, you might ask for more evidence of, of who they are or, or whatnot. And if we don't do this, they will just ban all of the money coming from anything like this. So that is the end game that we are working towards. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, Chainway, the guys who built Proof of Innocence, are now a Moloch DAO grantee. They're developing a version one of privacy pools uh, that will come after you know, our MVP of the list DAO, they're sort of parallel tracks. Uh, that will have arbitrary deposit and withdrawal amounts. And from there, in a, you know, future version two, we'll work on adding shielded transactions that maintain this uh, recursive Proof of Innocence. And so this is like, a little bit above my pay grade, but uh, the idea is that you know you send ETH uh, in a shielded transaction, you also send the proof of innocence at that time, and then when that person sends it on, they also pass on the proof of innocence, and you get this sort of like bundled proof that at the end when you withdraw, you can unwind the whole thing uh, and prove that at every step of the way you properly excluded all of the you know sanctioned addresses. And so in closing, uh, I just want to talk about you know, real world uh, example of this. And my friends and I, you know, we started Iran Unchained. It's a NGO slash DAO to send grants and supplies to Iranians inside of Iran for network infrastructure, humanitarian aid, and pro-democracy activities, which are uh, legal and you know, uh, this, this, this is what is allowed through general licenses by OFAC to, with the intention of allowing people like me to do this very specific thing. That said, uh, some of the people that we are trying to help are in opposition to the regime, and if they get caught, they would likely be imprisoned and potentially executed. And as it stands, I can't use Tornado Cash uh, to maintain privacy when I'm sending money because it's considered a terrorist. Uh, it is on the specially designated nationals list, like you know a bunch of other Iranian terrorists. Uh, and <clears throat> like the exemptions that allow me to send money into Iran uh, specifically say that the money could never go towards any specially designated nationals, which means it could never go towards something, uh, a, you know, tornado, which is sanctioned. So we have to be very careful. And, you know, fortunately, there are other privacy tools out there that we can make use of in the meantime. But privacy pools itself would be the ideal tool for this exact thing, because if it was widely used and you know, the government was okay with allowing people to preserve their privacy in this way, we would be able to withdraw the funds. And you know, even if we sent it to an exchange, the exchange would just be okay with the f knowing that it wasn't associated with any uh, terrorists or illicit sources of funds. 
So that's all I got. Uh, thank you for my time, or time, and thank you for listening. Thank you.